Number seven on the non-calculator portion, we're solving for x, okay? So the solution to this equation, we're going to solve, all we're looking for are x's. Are there two? Is there just one answer? We'll find out here in just a bit. Any method whatsoever. So any method, you could do factoring, you could do factor by grouping, you could do completing the square, you could just solve it, you could graph it. There's so many things that you could do. This is huge what I'm about to tell you. If I'm looking at a standard form, and I have these two terms, I must always, this is an always, set it equal to zero and then solve. But if you don't have both of those terms, you could just solve it the way you solve things from Algebra 1. Okay? So here we go. Right now, I have an A term, and I have a C term. So I don't have to set it equal to zero. I could solve it from right here by dividing both sides by three. You with me? But if I do this, a lot of people forget something on the next step. Okay? What's my? What do I do next? Square root. So the square root of 7, is that my answer? Not just that. What else is my answer? Plus or minus. This is huge. If you do it this method, remember the plus or minus. Otherwise, if you factor, it will kind of, when, you look in, when you're looking at the answers, it will kind of like call out to you, okay, there's a plus and minus. But if you don't factor and you do it this way, a lot of people tend to forget that in my classes as well. Okay? So... Yes, question. So why do you have to put the plus or minus if there's nothing there? So the reason why you have to do a plus or minus is because you're square rooting both sides. And on the quadratic formula, you know how you have negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac yes. all over 2a? This is a huge reason to account for both answers. Don't put up yet. Watch this last piece. But the biggest reason that I can help you with is the discriminant test, which will be heavily tested. If I looked at this, you tell me, what's B? Zero. Zero. What's A? Three. 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 Careful. 21. What would C be? Negative. Negative 21. So if I do B squared minus 4AC, notice this is going to be a positive answer, which gives me two real solutions. That's why over here I need to remember I have two real solutions. Do you need to like simplify the square root like to No, if you if it was like square root of 49, then simplify it to 7. But if it's like this, you don't know the square root of 7, leave it as that. Like the two square root of 3. Yeah, if you can simplify this. If it was something that you could simplify, yes, you must simplify it. Let's say that it said like 50. Okay? We know 50 is 25 times 2. Then you would square root it out as a plus or minus 5 root 2. That's a very, very good question because I want you simplifying for the test. Will you take points off? I will take points off if you don't simplify. Thank you very much for letting me record these.